Good afternoon. We are here today to remember and to honor and to celebrate the life and the character of Reverend Bert Collins. Bert was a simple, honorable, godly man. He was known throughout this community, the community of his choice. He was known and honored. He pastored in this church for over 30 years of fruitful and effective ministry. <laughs> and uh, he served in the Church of the Nazarene. And through his denomination, he was known and respected as a leader. But most of all, uh, he was a beloved father. He had two sons, two daughters. There are grandchildren, and uh, you'll be hearing from them later on. But he was also the husband of Christine after many years together. With his quiet wisdom, Bert always commanded respect wherever he went. He will be missed. So we come to this service today to say our final farewell. But because of his strength, solid faith, and godly character, he makes it easy for us to do this with dignity and with honor. So while we mourn and we remember, we can also celebrate. For here was a man who devoted his life to service who lived continually for others and devoted himself deeply to God. For we celebrate today a fruitful and a worthwhile life. Uh, the early Methodists had a hymn that they sang at funeral occasions like this. And the first two lines of that hymn say, Rejoice for a brother deceased. Our loss is his heavenly gain. So while we mourn and suffer loss today, we can also celebrate for a life that was good, the life of a faithful man. So we welcome you to the service and a scripture that would bring into the place the life that Bert lived and we anticipate the life to come. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Let's pray together. Our Father God, we come to pray together. And we ask for your help in this service. We pray that there will descend upon us a beautiful atmosphere and spirit of honor and dignity of hope and rejoicing and faith. We pray especially for your blessing on Christine who has suffered a great loss and her life from here on in will be so different. May she derive strength from this meeting, 
We pray too for the family, for the sons and for the daughters, that you will bless them. Uh, bless Mark and Laurie and Susan and Caroline. And may this service be an encouragement and a strength to them. Now, Lord, we commit the service into your hands and pray for your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Bert was a great lover of the old hymns of the church. He loved to sing them, and he knew them. The family have chosen some of his favorites, and we're going to sing them together in the course of this service. The first one is a hymn of hope and excitement and anticipation. When all my labors and trials are o'er and I'm safe on that beautiful shore, just to be near the dear Lord I adore, will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be glory for me. Let's sing it together. The words are in your folder. Let's stand as we sing. Dr. Claire McMillan, our district superintendent, national director, has some scripture that he would like to read and then to bring some greetings. At an occasion very much like the one we are part of today, Jesus spoke those words which we have heard already. The occasion was the uh, death and yes, the funeral of his friend, Lazarus. Uh, Lazarus's sisters 
were alarmed that Jesus hadn't been with them. And yet Jesus spoke comfort to them and said, I am the resurrection and the life. You who believe in me, though you are dead, yet shall you live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Bert claimed that promise many years ago. A few days earlier, Jesus said these words to his disciples, his closest friends. And you and we can count ourselves privileged by his word to be among his closest friends. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. A few centuries before that, a man named Job, contemplating his own mortality, spoke these words, and they're recorded in the scripture. He says, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And in another place he wrote, and it was quoted by St. Paul to Timothy, said, we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Moses, toward the end of his long life as a leader of God's people, said, the eternal God is my refuge, and underneath are his everlasting arms. So whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we belong to the Lord. For to this end Christ died and lives again, that he might be the Lord of both the living and the dead. And St. Paul wrote, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. This is the word of the Lord. I met Bert the first time when I was eight years old. Some of you would understand the context Entirely, he was my counselor at boys' camp. <laughs> he was, I think at that time, the youngest pastor in our district. Copetown, Ontario, I think was the church. Uh, went on to be renamed something else. But uh, his counseling, his care, and his friendship for those few days at boys' camp where I was so lonely I thought I would die. But he was a caring, loving counselor. And uh, through the years, I uh, have had the experience of knowing him to continue in that life for all of the years of his ministry and in his retirement. Family and friends, I share with you a deep sense of loss but also a deeper sense of anticipation that God will fulfill his promises. And we do not grieve as other people do, 
for we'll see, Bert, again. Uh, he has heard those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We aren't there yet, but we're walking in that direction. Thanks be to God. I have a letter from the Board of General Superintendents. In these days, it came to me by email. There will be a fancier copy on proper letterhead. I think it's already been mailed to Christine. But they asked if I would uh, very specifically read this to you today. Uh, it is signed by our uh, general superintendent just coming into jurisdiction, uh, Dr. Eugenio Duarte. Uh, it is on behalf of all of the Board of General Superintendents. September 27th to 2017, to the family and friends of Reverend Bert Collins, the Board of General Superintendents shares your sense of loss in the death of Bert Collins. Through these days of sorrow, they are also days of rejoicing because we know that Bert has heard his master say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Reverend Collins served as a godly pastor in the Church of the Nazarene for nearly 50 years including a 34-year-old, 34-year tenure right here in the Oxford Church of the Nazarene, the oldest local church in our denomination anywhere in the world. That is significant. Countless lives have been touched and will be testimonies to his committed life in Christ for this, we will always be grateful. Christine, we pray the Lord's presence will sustain you and your family during these days of mourning and provide the strength and comfort that will be needed in the days to come. God bless you, Eugenio Duarte and the Board of General Superintendents. God bless you. Another favorite hymn of Bert's is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. And I imagine he often sang this hymn with uh, good assurance. But today he could sing it with a greater assurance than he's ever had before. Let's sing it together. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Let's stand.
you. You may be seated. You will notice in your bulletin the next item is called a family moment. My understanding is that the inspiration for this family moment uh, came last Saturday when uh, Bert's life was running out and a number of the family were with him in the hospital gathered round his bed and they began to sing some hymns. It became a very precious and beautiful moment. A moment I'm sure that the family will never forget. And they want to try to recreate some of that for you right now. Family moment. Thank you. That was beautiful. Bert was certainly a strong family man, and in many ways he lives on in the spirit and the character of his children and uh, even his grandchildren. And some of the grandchildren have some memories and recollections that they want to share with you. So I'm going to ask these grandchildren to come up now. They will introduce themselves and then they will tell you their story.
For those of you who don't know me, my name is Carrie, and I feel so privileged to call this man my grandfather and to be part of this family. There's a verse in the Bible that says, so as those who have been chosen of God, holy and dearly loved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. As a grandfather, he was all of these things. I remember on one occasion, after living away for a couple of years, I'd come home for a few weeks. We were sitting and talking, and he asked me if I was glad to be home. And I said, yeah, I don't know, I guess so. And he said to me, with a look and a voice full of understanding, it's hard to come home, isn't it? Things never seem the same as they were before. But yeah, I agreed with him. But something that never changed was that I could be sure that within a few days of arriving back here, I'd get a phone call from him asking if I wanted to go to Tim's for coffee. <laughs> and he and Nan and I would go at 2.30 so we could drink our coffee and watch the three o'clock crowd arrive. <laughs> I'll miss that. But you and I can still go in. Over the last week while he was in the hospital, I looked around the room often. My grandmother by his side, surrounded by his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. <coughs> Every day brought more and more family from all over the country and the U.S. We sang his favorite songs, told stories, laughed, and cried together. And I just looked at him, and I felt so proud of him for raising such an amazing family. I love you, Graham. Well, I'm Sarah. Um, Grampy would call me Sadie, so I'll respond to that as well. And uh, I think we can all agree that Grampy was a man of faith, a pioneer of not just this church, but many across the district, and a charitable man with uh, the heart of a servant. And while these characteristics sum up who my grandfather was, it is in the little details of him as a family man that I will cling to. It was the Sunday lunches after church, after the church has been locked up and ready to go, just before Grampy would lay down for his Nazarene nap, he would come through the door saying, what you got good to eat here? <laughs> With a grin on his face and his arms wide open to envelop me in a hug and usually a few too many whisker rubs. On many Sunday afternoons or on any of the days I was blessed to go over to Nanny and Grampy's home, whether in PEI, Oxford, or Amherst, me and Grampy would watch one of his favorite films, The Music Man. I could recite every line, every song, every joke, every dance from that movie. Grampy liked his things and he stuck to them. But now that Grampy has passed on and shook the hands with the Almighty, I know there is a celebration in heaven in which there are 76 trombones in the big parade. And Grampy was at the front conducting them all like he did here once. Now I'll leave you with a benediction like my grandfather always did from Professor Harold Hill to take with you as a reminder of the importance of your days here on earth. You can pile up enough of tomorrows and you are left with nothing but a lot of empty yesterdays. And I don't know about you, but I would like today to make today worth remembering. My name is Bethany. Um, I'm Larry's daughter. Um, I'm actually going to read a poem that Karen Barkley wrote. Um, try and keep it together. <laughs> um, okay. Anticipation mounted as the angels gathered round. Another saint was surely near, for they heard the trumpet sound. The table had been set just right, all his favorites on his plate. The choir had assembled just inside the eastern gate. The ones that he had touched were there, too many souls to number. God raised his mighty hand as they heard a sound like thunder. Um, they turned their eyes towards the gate as Jesus took his place. The choir struck a heavenly chord and sang Amazing Grace. The gleaming doors swung open and Jesus took his hand. He wrapped his arms around him for he truly loved this man. 
Friends and family welcomed him. The rejoicing had begun as the spirit hovered round him with the father and the son. The singing and rejoicing went on and on that day for another saint came through the doors and he was there to stay. The announcement has been made directly from the throne. I am well pleased to tell you all, Bert Collins has come home. Well, with any luck, I can hold it together as well as these ladies did. Uh, I wrote this last night about three in the morning, so if it doesn't make any sense, it does to him. I've heard many things about uh, Gramps over the past few days. For such a small man, he's stood so tall. For a small man, he had big shoes. He helped and guided so many. The list goes on. For me, the one thing that always stood out, always stands out, not only in his message, but in how he lived his life, was forgiveness. Unending forgiveness, compassion, and understanding. Didn't matter what clothes you had on, where you came from, what your past was, he would always take you in and do whatever he could to help without judgment. I remember after we had our little girl, Jordy, I went to see him for advice on marriage and uh, what he thought I should do. I wasn't sure what to expect. First thing he said was, have you discussed it with Jessica? <laughs> hmm, I said, no, should I? It was at this point he looked at me with a knowing grin and said, there's no rush, my boy. It hurts to think we won't see him again in this life. But that pain for me is almost completely washed away. Knowing he's enjoying the resort, he, reward he so rarely deserves. He's left behind an amazing family. And I'm truly honored to be part of that family and to call him Gramps. Uh, it's a little poem I must have found somewhere. Budsy, we'll miss you. Never condescending. We needed no pretending. Grampy, we'll miss you. Never too demanding. So much understanding. Mr. C, never too busy to show you care no matter when or where. Bert, I'll miss you, never far away. I see you in the family we've made every single day. You'd always get us with a whisker burn. Both young and old, we'd never learn. But today, we'd all line up and gladly take our turn. Thank you, grandchildren. I, I think we all learned some things about Bert that we never knew before. Even Christine would learn something. Larry Collins is going to come now and present the eulogy for his father. And then following that, Beth is going to sing for us. Well, sir, here we are again. <laughs> that was good, guys. Thanks. Tough act to follow. So I'm going to roll here. Because <clears throat> sometimes I feel really happy, and sometimes I feel really sad. <laughs> Is that okay? Hmm. 
every time I look around this building, I see so much of how, you know, he was so excited about the sparkles in the wall. <laughs> when they came, I don't know if you know that, but he, oh, he can get sparkles in the wall. He can, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> so many things. <clears throat> Screwing the pews down the night before dedication. And, you know, Walter mentioned the, the stairs over here. There used to be a balcony right here because the front of the church was up there where the foyer is now. We used to sit on, on good nights when our parents weren't watching. We'd sneak and sit on the stairs <clears throat> for church instead of, you know, instead of in the pew. Hmm. There used to be tile over here under the old church too instead of carpet. And so we'd get at the back during prayer meeting, shoot ourselves as far as we could <laughs> under the pews. <laughs> Hopefully the tiles weren't sticking up because that really hurt. <laughs> a lot of good memories here. But I'm privileged. <clears throat> privileged. I really am. Mm. Glad you got me to Pope again. <laughs> There's the wave. So today, or tonight, I, <clears throat> not tonight, <clears throat> yeah, it took me a little longer to get here than everybody else, <clears throat> just because we live so far away. You don't realize how far you live away until you have to come home, you know that, right? So when I got there, everybody else was tired, and I, I got the chance to sit with Pa the whole night through, <clears throat> and everybody else got some sleep. We had a good conversation. He couldn't talk back. <laughs> so we talked a lot. And I sat there and thought, you know, what about this man? So I wrote some stuff. A lot of you have read it on Facebook and stuff in here, but I'm just going to read it. A thousand thoughts fill my head as I watch him breathing. What is the measure of a man, of life lived, of success? When it all comes down to this, to these final lingering increments of time, what is it we can say about a person that truly and really honors their legacy? <clears throat> My dad has never been rich. And yet, that day and throughout his time in the hospital, there was hardly a moment then there was less than a dozen people around him. They had to get us a bigger room. <laughs> My dad's a quiet man, and yet people come through the room all day and whisper words of thanks for his influence in their lives. My dad was not a great charismatic leader, but he was a leader. And through decades of what I consider to be uncommon faithfulness, because it's not very common, and he was always the same, you know that, don't you? <laughs> Uncommon faithfulness. Hundreds of lives are bound for heaven's eternity. That otherwise would not be. I could go on. But suffice to say that the man lying in front of me that night was a man who, despite all the odds, <clears throat> and by quiet consistency, has been a great success for Jesus. <laughs> what more is there? Wow. <laughs> A great success for Jesus and a powerful role model for those around him. What more is there than that? The most powerful fact, the thing for me, was I sat there and looked, he's just like me, he's, he's not perfect. <laughs> he had his struggles and his stories of things to overcome. But through a simple determination, it was just that, a simple determination to pursue God with his whole heart. He lived a life that is an honor to his God and a lasting blessing to his family, his church, and his community. So I would say that's a pretty good legacy. Hmm? Thanks, Dad. <laughs> you are loved and cherished. Well done, good and faithful servant. Money is empty. Possessions fail. Position is vain. The journey of a good life is live one godly decision at a time. 
and then eternity. Thanks, Pa. We love you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Beth and Larry. The meditation for our service today is going to be given uh, by Reverend Dewey Rector. However, behind that is a little story. Uh, both Dewey and Bert formed a very deep and lasting friendship. Lasted for decades. But somewhere in the course of that friendship, they came to an agreement. And the agreement was, whichever one of them dies first, the other will preach at his service. <laughs> so Reverend Rector, yours is the honor. And indeed it is an honor and a wonderful privilege for me to have a part in this time of rejoicing, but also of remembering the great life that God gave to us when he allowed us to share in Bert Collins's life. I was going to tell that story, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> and I want you to know that it happened when I came over here for a memorial service at the uh, cemetery, cemetery service. And uh, that's when Bert said to me, uh, will you uh, take part in my funeral? And I said, yes, and whichever one of us goes first. So that's why I'm here, in case you might be wondering. <laughs> but before I bring a message today, I want to just say a few things about Bert, about Bert Collins, a wonderful, wonderful person and uh, someone that I have known and been related with for 50 years. Believe that. Now, I didn't meet him when I was eight years old, but... Uh, <laughs> I want to mention uh, a few highlights of our relationship throughout that time. And one of the things that I want you to hear is that when I say friend, I know that every one of you who are here has known Bert as a friend. But I'm also sure that Christine and Mark and Susan and Carolyn and uh, that other fella <laughs> who reminds me so much of his dad, Larry, uh, that to you all and to the grandchildren, he was much more than a friend. During the time that Jeannie and I lived here in Oxford, he visited our home many times, and uh, not only did he counsel us and help us in life, but he never left our home without a prayer. And uh, that's just so wonderful to me. And I want to say that his prayers were rarely long prayers, but they were tremendously meaningful, and they were effective, and they were fervent. He was selfless and filled with the Holy Spirit. Of special interest to him, and maybe to you, was Big Lake Camp. He worked hard to make it a place for God to do his work, and he did that work among young and uh, among old alike. In fact, it was there that he let me down into the waters of baptism and allowed me to proclaim my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and my desire to serve our Lord forever and forever. So I got to thinking about things because Larry and his work was spoken about as a carpenter, and uh, I said, well, they were saying, well, where did Larry get that from? And I was saying, well, you know, Bert, when I remember Bert coming here and beginning to work here, that he did a lot of carpenter work. Then I thought about the church that we first worshiped in, and then look at the church that we're worshiping in now. Pastor Collins had so much put into that, not only in uh, uh, support work and in encouraging work to all the members, but also in his own skills and abilities. And he had skills and abilities that were outside of ministry as well, ability to encourage others and uh, to allow others to be used for God's work. Pastor Collins was someone to whom I looked up as a fellow pastor. I consider him to be one of my mentors, and many times in personal things in my life and in serving as a, as a pastor, he helped me to see what I should do and where I should go. I so appreciated Sunday evening services, and I'm sure that there are others here who have uh, had that experience as well and that joy of being here to 
See this service so filled with the power of the gospel and the presence of the Holy Spirit, because Bert was preaching and Bert was also leading the worship and the music. I can see him today guiding the congregation with his hands and also with his beautiful and great voice. I want to tell you a very special story that occurred shortly after I came to the town of Oxford. At that time, I was the pastor of the United of the Baptist Church of the United Church in Oxford, and uh, shortly after Bird came, he came down to the church in the morning and uh, came in and introduced himself. Now I want you to realize he's the newie, not me. And he came in and introduced himself, and we talked for a while, but it wasn't very long before we were on our knees at the front of the church, praying for our our own pastorates, praying for the community, praying for our churches. And that's something that has never instantaneously taken place in my life before or since. So I just wanted to share those few thoughts with you today. And then I have a message, and I want to share that with you. I want to refer to a couple of pastors of God, portions of God's (laughs) word by way of a message. And I find that I cannot do that without making reference to Brother Bert. And first, I want to explain to you that it is very common for me to greet other Christians as brothers or as sisters. This I did with Bert, and his response always was, friend. I believe that must have a significance. Because of that, I want to share with you a passage of scripture that comes from John chapter 15. Jesus says this, My commandment is this, Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. I've thought about a lot about that word that Brother Collins always used, friend. And I've thought also about the words of Jesus contained in verse 12 of that chapter. There are two things I want to point out from that. First of all, Whether or not Brother Collins meant it this way, to me, it is Jesus saying to his disciples, all of his disciples, those who were the twelve and those who believed on him after that, I believe that he was saying that we have a very close personal relationship with him. But also, we have a very close personal relationship with one another. Everyone who believes in him has a close relationship with Jesus. Everyone who believes in him has a close relationship with each other. Our relationship with Jesus gives us eternal life. Bert had that relationship and that eternal life. And uh, what he had with Jesus has been a special blessing to me. The second thing that I would say about this passage 
is that Jesus not only spoke the words in verse 13, but he meant it, and he demonstrated that he meant it by giving his life on the cross for you and for me. And that verse says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Further, because Brother Bert believed in Jesus, in a sense, he gave himself in his service, and he also laid down his life for us, this church and this community. Now, I lost the other place that I was going to read to you from, so I have to take a moment to look it up. But I know where it is. The other, word, the other passage that I want to read to you and to speak to you from is chapter 19 of Luke's Gospel. And I want to read you a little bit about it. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is, was lost. So this second portion of God's word refer, that I refer to is the passage about Zacchaeus. And uh, I believe that it fits well into Bert's ministry, for he certainly believed that Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. And he proclaimed that as the truth always in his messages. I heard someone say that Bert was a gentle giant, and I believe that that is so true. But even though he was a gentle giant, he was a little bit like Zacchaeus. And I want to spend a few minutes on this encounter with Zacchaeus, thinking about Pastor Collins. In particular, I want to say that as Zacchaeus climbed a tree to see Jesus, Brother Bert climbed the tree of preparation, of dedication, and of service to see Jesus. He saw him every time that someone came to believe upon Jesus as their Savior. He saw him every time that he prayed and God answered his prayer. Whether he had prayed for salvation for someone, or whether he had prayed for their healing, or whether he had prayed for their deliverance, whether he had prayed for their reconciliation, whether he prayed for their comfort in the time of sorrow, whatever, Bert saw Jesus. And we would do well to have that practice of looking for Jesus because of what we have done for him entering into the lives of other folks. And right now, Brother Bert is seeing Jesus face to face rejoicing with him forever in those everlasting arms that we heard about. 
Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down. To Brother Bert, he has said, Make haste and come up. Make haste and come come up. Because he said long before, Jesus said long before, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. In chapter 17 of John's Gospel, Jesus prays, and he prays again for his disciples, the twelve, or the eleven now. He prays also for those who will come to faith through them. And what does he say about them? He says, Father, I will that they also that thou hast given me be with me where I am. And I believe that he has said surely to Brother Collins, You have done a wonderful job, and I welcome you into my home, my presence. And, uh, you know, today we're sort of rejoicing because we know where Brother Collins is. Will that be the way it is when your time to pass from this life comes? Will you and your friends and family have joy because you have reached out and received the precious gift that God offers to everyone that is ours to have in Jesus Christ and his offering for us on the cross and his great victory that he got for us in the resurrection. It's a victory over sin. It's a victory over death. And it's a victory over the devil. We need to claim that. And then we will meet Brother Bert and all those others who've gone forward before us in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we are blessed to have such wonderful experiences of love and service as we see in those who have really, really, really believed in Jesus and are offering up their lives in service for friends. Thank you that that is Brother Bert. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you will help us to just realize how much we need to respond to your call to do those same things and to live that same life. And Father, I pray for Christine and for Mark and for Larry, for Susan and for Carolyn, for the grandchildren, I thank you that they have been able to find solace in the trust in your word, in the trust in your son, our savior, what he has done and what he said would happen to us if we trusted in him. Thank you, Father, how wonderful you are to reach out and to touch us who are but the children of men, with your might, your power, and your saving grace. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Rector, for that message. Our last hymn in the service this afternoon It's a very beautiful hymn and fits what has been said. It is well, it is well with my soul. And on an occasion like this, really there's nothing more important than for you to be able to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. Let's sing it together and we'll stand to sing.
are invited to join the family for the burial. It will be in Pine Grove Cemetery immediately following the close of the service. And there will be a reception in the basement of the church following that. In a moment, we will have the benediction, but it will be a unique benediction. I imagine it's a recording, and the voice you hear will be the voice of Bert Commons. I imagine over the years he has said many, <coughs> many, many benedictions in this church. But this one is unique. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's listen to the benediction. He gives us eternity. For I am persuaded, he says, that neither death nor hell, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The writer penned these words. He says, for you and me, he prayed on the tree the prayer is accepted, the sinner is free. The sinner am I who on Jesus rely and come for the pardon God will not deny. He can't deny forgiveness. He's opened the door and he cannot shut it until a man comes through that door. It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There be no more war. It's over. The victory is ours. The cluster of trinities. There is Gethsemane. The, the sound of tears. There is Gabatha. The sound of an angry shout. But then there is Golgotha. The sound of victory. It is over. The battle's won. But it's not won. Until you make it your victory. He died upon the cross. He paid the price. But it means nothing to you. It would do you no good one bit until you own up to your sinfulness and recognize that you are a sinner. Until you are, are recognize that he died for you. And then you open your life and invite him into your heart. Make it real in your heart, will you? Make it real in your life this year. Don't just go by, by rote or by, by idea or by uh, tradition. But let Jesus, if he hasn't come into your heart, come into your heart and turn you around and make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. So that one day you're going to hear his words. Come, blessed of my father, enter into the kingdom prepared for you and for me from before the foundation of the world. Mystery of mysteries. It's all prepared for those who prepare themselves. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the resurrection. Thank you, Father, for the truth of your word today, that in the midst of confusion, in the midst of sorrow and uncertainty, we can know beyond any doubt that we are yours. Bless this people, we pray. Dismiss us with your blessing. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen.